Good morning. This is Josh Widdicombe. How are you, producer Neil? Very well, thank you, Josh Widdicombe. How are you, intern Charles? Good, thanks, Josh. There we go. Dealt with how... Been up to anything, doesn't matter. I went to um, America and um, working, and I brought back what you requested, Neil. Oh, yes. I thought you'd be excited. <laughs> oh. Cheered you right up. What do, do you know what he's requested, Charles? If you were going to America, what would be the one thing you'd want to bring back? I'd imagine it's some sort of sweet, <laughs> knowing Neil. Probably yeah. a Hershey's Look at the smile like on his face. Oh, I'm so excited. Peanut butter m ms Yes, please. Oh. There you go. Oh, is that the biggest bag you could find? Are you wow. having a laugh? Got two. <laughs> One for Charles. Oh, oh I've got two. That's it. Did you expect a bigger bag? Yeah. When when Maz, who I present, uh, produced on Community Present from Seven, he went, he bought me a bag that was the size of my head. Well, that's fine. You can have Charles's. <laughs> Do, you <want> them? <laughs> yeah. Do you want them, Charles? You can have them, Neil. It's my present to you. So why don't they do them over here? I don't know. I tell you, there's a lot of issues. Have you been in the pret a in America? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's no. like a nightmare. All right, for a start, all of their cans of drink are different shape. <laughs> <laughs> They're more like shaped like a can of Red Bull. Okay. Which is... And then... The cheese, the, the mozzarella and tomato croissant, they've gone completely, they've got a completely different recipe now. <laughs> Tell you what they've done. They're, I've taken a photo. All right. <laughs> now, describe what the mozzarella and tomato croissant is like in Britain. Um, with, obviously, it's one of the greatest things in the world. It's just like a flat croissant with tomato and cheese lumped on top of it. Melted, yeah? Yeah, melted. Look at that. Oh, that looks much better. That's no, it does not. Continental. It's got They've cut a croissant in half and put some slices of mozzarella and a slice of tomato in the middle. And basil. And basil. Absolutely sick making, the whole thing. How are we meant to, how are we meant to keep a special relationship going with these guys <laughs> when they're doing stuff like that? I'm just glad to see you used your time in America productively. I went to prep four times in three days. Why not? If you know it's good, it's not, though, over there. <laughs> That's the problem, mate. Also, while I'm on Pret and Mondre, if someone could sort this one out, in the airport, right? They have a, a they have a pesto, a mozzarella, but artisan baguette that doesn't exist outside an airport. <laughs> why do I mean? It's good. It's not worth flying. <laughs> what? Why? What? It. Tweet them, you've got the profile. What, tweet pret a <laughs> Yeah. Shall I tweet them now? Yeah. While we play Modest Mouse, okay. and then if they've replied by the end of the show, then we know, yeah, you know, we all know their own but McDonald's anyway. That's unbelievable. Josh Um, start with a question. We'll role play. Imagine you're a kind of successful career woman who commutes. Okay. Would you do that thing where they wear a pair of trainers with the smart clothes? Yeah, why not? I just think I don't know what my views are meant to be on this. They can be whatever you want them to be, unless they're really just, bad, in which case I don't just, air it's them. It's a strange look, isn't it? It can be, but sports trainers are very fashionable, just in general, aren't they, at the moment? It's not like the 80s. <laughs> Big tongues and the air bubbles. It seems that way, from what I can, when I look at people's feet. Do you ever wear smart shoes? No. The smartest shoes I've probably got are some all-black Vans slip-ons. So you'd wear them to a wedding? Uh, yeah, probably. What did you wear at your wedding? trainers no i had some hired shoes you hired some shoes well i wore a kilt we're from so... a bowling alley <laughs> i wore a kilt so they were oh, the, yeah i forgot you were the shoes we got like how, you hired some shoes how old were they like could you feel that a previous feet had been there in there no did they spray them with that stuff before they gave them to you <laughs> i had other things on my mind to be honest and how old are these shoes you, you hired some shoes. I hired a whole outfit. So what outfit. goes with a kilt? So you have the kilt and then you have the shirt and the... No, no, no. I mean, what kind of shoes? They're like black shoes, but then they've got the laces that kind of tie up around your calf and the top. Oh, yeah, of course. Do You probably don't even own a suit. I do. If you were nominated for some kind of big radio award, would you wear a kilt to the ceremony? No, 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 no. no. Why not? Because it's... You wear a kilt to every show we do. <laughs> it's, uh, no, I wouldn't. There might have been people listening going, well, we'll nominate them to see whether he goes through with his kilt thing right now. Well, you're from Devon, so if you were nominated for a no, big award, I... would you wear a Morris dancing outfit? No, but I wouldn't wear that on my wedding day either. 
Because the thing is, I'm comfortable enough with who I am not to have to try and dress up to prove where I'm from. Josh Oh! Oh! What? Exciting moment. <laughs> Someone, we've got, we've, we've got a live AOB, mate. Is, is there any other business, your complaints? Someone has texted in to pick us up on the first link. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Pret is, Pret owned by McDonald's is an urban myth. Really? Yeah. yeah. They put up a bit of investment at the start but never owned it and sold their share years ago. <laughs> there we go. Bet they regret that. Thank you, 398. Yep. Are you giving out the end of their phone number? Or just their security code on the back of their debit card? <laughs> right, so that is what we're looking for, complaints. Do you want your first, any other business? Yes, please. What will it sound like if we uh, okay it? There we go, it's lovely, isn't it? What's that? C1. C1. Hi, guys. Glaring error. Oh, someone's... We've had another AOB about the first... Uh, about the first link. <laughs> <laughs> They're all coming in now, Neil. What we've done... It's just live complaining. So I was put one measly bag. My sister Helen bought me so much she had to pay for extra luggage weight. <laughs> that can't be true. I like to think it is true. Do you know why it's not true? Why? Oh, no, 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 it could be true, but... I mean... It's not true. Why is it not true? Well, you just put them in his hand luggage. Depends how many you've bought. Or you've got a spare case, you've emptied... emptied packets and just poured them straight into the <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like a ball because ball. you don't want to waste space on the packets exactly and trapped there yeah do you know what i was thinking when i was at passport um when i was checking my bag if if my suitcase was say the size of uh, my mobile phone <laughs> but with a handle and, and wheels but it was about the size of my mobile phone would they allow me to check it in yeah why not I mean, there's a Dom Jolly one right there, mate. <laughs> Man with the tiniest suitcase in the world. <laughs> do I have to come up with them all for him? Let's just do Andrew and Bo's. Yeah, no, I'm going to. Okay. Hi, guys. Glaring error in a couple of weeks ago regarding Moses. Seems like we're a bit more <laughs> highbrow last couple of weeks ago. Well, I, mean, I hope he's not just going to go in hard on religion here. Um, producer Neil said Moses would hold back the river as per the James Bay song. Of course, Moses held back the Red Sea, not a river. All right. <laughs> if you're going to skip church on a Sunday morning, at least get your theology right. If you dispute this, I'll get my dad to the Bishop of Durham on you. Oh, that's exciting, isn't it? Was that the sound of of God appro <laughs> approving? <laughs> that might be our most high, pro high profile listener, Andrew Imbo. <laughs> Via his it's dad. a kick in the teeth, <laughs> isn't it? You think, and that yeah, I don't think you can go around and go, God, oh, we've got some pretty high profile listeners, the son of the Bishop of Durham. But the Bishop of Durham might have listened if he went into Andrew's room. Should Andrew still live at home and have us on? Andrew is in bow. Unless, unless, unless the Bishop of Durham has got the worst commute in the world. <laughs> Works remotely. God's all around us, mate. <laughs> if yes, I mean, that is true. Well, I, I, don't, I can't confirm or deny that, actually. Um, Josh, it's true. There is no K in the Italian alphabet. There we go. <laughs> Shall I carry on reading? Let's I go. am Greek, with my surname beginning with K. And when I was seven, I went to an Italian school with my best friend. During the register, I wasn't called out because my surname began with K. I was so upset that I didn't exist that I cried. <laughs> that's an astonishing story. That's great. You could just bunk off school. No one would know. Yeah. But don't bunk off school. That's from Sia. Um, well, I presume she's called Sia. She might be called Siak, but we can't see it. <laughs> Next one. Podcast episode 93 is titled Talking Exes, School Elections and More. Exes should be spelt exes since it's a plural. No, I'll change that. <laughs> <laughs> to be even more pedantic, yes, please. Blink-182 were originally called Blink. But when they contacted an, uh, by an Irish band of the same name threatened legal action, they added the 182, coming from the amount of times Al Pacino says the F-word in Scarface. Oh, grow up. <laughs> You're adults. Absolutely. Have a look in a mirror, wear some normal-length trousers, and have a think about how pathetic you are. They weren't adults at the time. They would have been. It's been a big week for Blink, hasn't it? Has it? Yeah, Tom DeLong is no longer in the band. Lots of fallout, lots of online... Lots of fallout, boy. <laughs> lots of online bickering. Really? Yeah. Do we care? 
People do. Keep up, mate. You know, they're arguing over all the small things, I imagine. <laughs> I mean, in the level of musical genres, which need to have a long, hard look in the mirror, <laughs> skater punk is number one. <laughs> they, had a, they had an album called Enema of the State. How do you go home to your parents at Christmas and tell them what you're doing for a living? I imagine they'd probably just invite them over to their massive mansions. Yeah, that would be probably full of Star Wars figures. <laughs> I mean, what's wrong with being a proper adult? <laughs> if they wore trainers on the tube, that would be the smartest bit of their <laughs> outfit, and they wouldn't get the tube because they'd be skateboarding to work. <laughs> Yours pedantically, Tadge in Ireland. Gang, just wanted to thank you for the informative Ting Tings podcast when you also mentioned the Wombats. Last week when my fia- fiancé said, I wonder whatever happened to the Wombats, I was able to tell her exactly what they were up to. <laughs> Needless to say, she was very impressed by my knowledge of minor foreign gigs, and I didn't tell her how I knew. I'm a new listener to the podcast and hope this high calibre of knowledge transfer continues. Thanks, Tom Flannery Darby. He'll be very pleased with the Blink-182 stuff that we've just given out. If you have an issue with the show, or just... I mean, Blink-182. Would you describe describe yourself as a fan? No, not a fan, but... But you're a fan of bowling for soup. (laughs) Um, No, definitely not. Avenged Sevenfold? No. No FX? No. All of those bands can be heard uh, on LBC or something. They play, <laughs> do they play them? My name's Nick Clegg. That was cool, Clegg. This is Rival Schools. I'm not having that. I love Rival Schools. From the album Shine 5, dodgy within a room on XFM. Neil guessed that it was Shine 5, Googled it, and it was. Have you got the track listing? Uh, yeah, let me have the two seconds. Very quick game on that. I know we will move on because I've got some facts about Dodgy because I know that is the game we play with indie bangers. It was a double, Shine 5 was a double album. Okay. Um, so CD1. Can you name me any bands on there that I won't have heard of? No, you'll, you'll have heard of all of these. Oh. I reckon. I want the real passengers. Well, uh, disc one, track 20, Gin Blossoms. <laughs> oh, we know the Gin Blossoms, mate. Do you want your, my two Dodgy facts? Yes, please. Number one, at the height of the 90s, one of them was going out with Denise Van Outen. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and then, when things had gone a bit bit dodgy, eh? <laughs> <laughs> eh? In... <laughs> upheld? I, I almost did a, a, a crass comment then with Upheld. <laughs> almost, I always re-referenced Denise Van Outen. I, and then I thought, no, I can rise above it. And one, that once again... I cut off with that phrase. Um, the second point is um, in the year 2000 when things weren't going as well for Dodgy. I don't know if you remember the show Castaway uh, with Ben Fogel. It was really the, was the making of Ben Fogel. Yep. Um, and uh, they were all sent to the Scottish island of Terence, say. And then um, for a year, and uh, Dodgy uh, sailed out to Terence, say. <laughs> to play a gig. Do you remember this? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> this is... Right, considering these people that have spent a year with no TV, <laughs> no electric, this is the best bit. <laughs> and then the 30 castaways uh, told Dodgy they didn't want them to play the gig. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks but no thanks, guys. <laughs> it was surreal. Do, is there a clip available of it? It's, on, it's on YouTube. Is it on YouTube? I watched it not that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Well, they did it as a PR stunt, and then the castaways got wind of it and were like, we're not going to be used like this. And Unbelievable. Sent them packing. No such thing as bad PR, <laughs> although being told to F off by Ben Fogel's pretty much up there. Josh Widdicombe. Unique ways you waste time at work. I mean, obviously, both me and you work very hard. But we've pre- our previous jobs. When I worked in uh, Waterstones... Uh, I mean, I could admit this now because... Um, you don't work there anymore? Don't work there anymore. I, I reached the level of grade two bookseller out of five. I used to go and sit in the toilet for ten minutes. <laughs> lid down, just sit. Why didn't you take a book with you? You worked in Waterstones. You weren't allowed books in the toilet because they thought you might be, you know, stealing them. Or page by page. <laughs> it, was like, um, it was like in a prison. You'd eat them. <laughs> uh, what ways have you wasted time at work? I was trying to think. Not that I do it now because I'm... Always busy and stuff like that. But steal from work? No. I, uh, back in the day, if... Where did you get those headphones from that you just put in your bag? They belong in this studio. And yeah, I'll no, take no. them back to another studio. Yeah, whatever. It used to be quite good. You'd find an empty studio, because they're kind of soundproof as well, if you had a late night or... Sleep in the studio? Yeah, you just 
turn all the lights off, sleep in the studio. Like George in Seinfeld used to sleep <laughs> on his desk. When yeah, he a little bit. New York Yankees. Perfect 30 minute, 30 minute power nap. Really? Did, so where would you go? Where would you sleep? Under the desk? Under the desk, or if you've got two chairs, you know, you sit in one and then put your feet up on the other. And because they're all air conditioned as well, you can get the temperature just right. Wow. Some studios have sofas Were you sofas worried in you were them. ever going to go live? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't have to worry about that. Would that be your worst nightmare? I'm not going to get into how the dynamics of a radio studio works. It's just boring, but it, it could never happen. I was riffing, Neil, and you just said you'd be blocked. <laughs> That's the first rule against improvisation. Josh Widdicombe. Podcast XFM. I found out um, what uh, doggles are. Do you know what doggles are? No. Dogs and goggles. What? Dogs what? wearing goggles. But why would dogs wear goggles? Get on a Google image search and you'll see, mate. If they're looking out of a car and their hair is blowing and they're wearing a pair of goggles to cover up their eyes from the wind, you're in for a great photo. <laughs> a morning I spent looking for them. Good searches. Doggles. Doggles car. You, you say you're busy, but you've got so much time in your hands. No, I was, I was, in, a, I was in a writing meeting for the last lag. <laughs> but, uh, but no one knows what you're really doing on your laptop. And the odds are they're not going to accuse you of that. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, <laughs> you know, no one's ever going to go. You searching doggles? Anyway, I um, I was, I was, you know, go on my Twitter. I've tweeted some of my favourite doggles. <laughs> I'll tweet them from at XFM as well. Oh no, don't because I was tweeting them to someone else. <laughs> but it's also now my screensaver on my phone. <laughs> you can't get enough doggles. That's what I say. And do you know what? I think a dog in goggles has more artistic merit than the whole of the career of Blink One Eight Two. Josh. Widdicombe. Panic. The Smiths on X of M. <laughs> what? He's like, panic. Panic. <laughs> Intern Charles building his pot. <laughs> Undermining. Sorry. No, it's fine, you know. If that's, if that's the way you want to play it, mate. <laughs> mate. Um, this is the Josh Widdicombe Show. I'm looking for a new intern. Oh. Oh. Um, panic. Uh, Neil. Shall we discuss today's text and tweet topics? Yes, please. Number one, this, uh, sadly, this is going to involve us talking to intern Charles again. <laughs> which is a, a kick in the nashes. Um, right, have you ever written to a celebrity? Yes. Now, you have. Yeah, sorry, jumped in there. It's all right. Taking my cue from intern Charles. <laughs> who, who have you written to? I wrote to WWF legend <laughs> Brutus the Barber Beefcake. <laughs> Brutus the Barber <laughs> Beefcake. Yeah. Which bit of that is his nickname? That's just three nicknames. Because <laughs> if you're called Brutus Beefcake, you don't leave the barber in the middle. Well, I don't even know if Brutus was his first name as well. No, I, d- I doubt. Let me clear that up. It probably wasn't. You don't know. He did. What? You think he was called Brutus Beefcake? No, he might have been called Brutus Cake. Smith. Brutus Cake. Brutus Cake. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I was flicking through the paper when I was younger and there was a competition to win some WWF gear mm. and the winner was going to be drawn like a by, ring like a ring yeah the winner was going to be drawn by Brutus the Barber Beefcake so I just wrote a note <laughs> saying like how much I admired him as a wrestler what you tried to you kind of tried to do some insider trading a little bit <laughs> but you basically you, you've misinterpreted right to celebrities with have you ever entered a competition <laughs> yeah right <laughs> Charles, so you must have written us to a celebrity, haven't you? We've we've discussed this. This is where it came from, really. I I wrote to Otis the Aardvark. Yes. Um, <laughs> See, Neil. Okay. No response, though. No response. No. Why had, did you write to Otis the Aardvark? He had to go to the Isle of Wight. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and You're from it, the Isle of Wight. I felt, to yeah, I felt duty bound to. Uh, so how old were you? Go back. You'd have been about I ten. No. No, uh, seven or eight. Seven or eight. Yeah. Is when uh, CBBC started broadcasting to the Isle of Wight. Yeah. Because uh, there was a point where it just wasn't on. BBC what? just wasn't on. You can get the BBC? Wa- yeah, just the certain parts of the day well, you didn't to get broadcast. You first. Or that, yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> I need to get the donkey going. What do you mean certain parts of the day it didn't broadcast? Well, they just, there was, like, the the signal, uh, <laughs> they just didn't boost it for some <laughs> programming. <laughs> so there was large portions were completely blank. No. Yeah, in the early 90s. Really? Yep. So what did you do? Watched ITV. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, you get ITV. Yeah, there's just certain parts of the BBC just didn't broadcast. Wow. So you wrote to Otis the Aardvark. What did he, what did he say about well, they Isle said, of Wight? Seems like he has good cause to have a go at you. <laughs> well, we were on the uh, the north of the island, so we managed to get some of the signal from Portsmouth. So I'd always had CBBC. Yeah. Um, and he, it was a big celebration that the little bitty Isle of Wight finally get to watch 
Uh, CBBC and I found it uh, patronising at the age of seven <laughs> so I got my mum to help me write a letter I, th- <laughs> I, I think the thing is uh, Otis has got a point mate well it is small yeah it's A it's small and yeah. B I mean in the 90s you couldn't get the BBC never got can't get Channel 5 without Freeview I mean <laughs> yeah it's, what a world we live in yeah eh? you, you know I mean, I've, I, I've, I have been to the Isle of Wight, but, I mean, I don't want to get in a situation where seven-year-olds write me a letter. Let's move on. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. You're welcome. Did you just turn him down? <laughs> yeah. Po- right, the next one is uh, Umbrella Just uh, Politeness. Um, <laughs> she hasn't been shown in this link. Have you? What have you eaten? What opinions have you agreed to? Or what have you gone to out of politeness? I. It still sticks with me. Um, I remember going to a friend's grand's I can still taste the cake. <laughs> <laughs> I must have been about nine or ten. And I still to this day don't know whether it was a practical joke. <laughs> How bad that cake tasted. It just didn't even taste of cake, Neil. <laughs> what did it taste of? Just... I can't... You know, some things you just can't even explain. Yeah. Uh, it's like love or... <laughs> Or, you know, the concept of whether there's an afterlife. You just can't explain that cake. <laughs> but, uh, OK. <laughs> Have you got one? No? No, I can't say... Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, uh, unbelievable. Josh Whittacombe, 11.09. Susie Ruffle has just arrived at the Josh Whittacombe show. I have. Just in time. L- literally just in time. But I'm here. Yeah, no, yeah, Scarf it's off in the room. Yeah, no, scarf off in the room. That's what we demand. Producer Neil's still here. Still here. It's joined by Josie Long. I'm now here. You're now here. And you're, you'll be here until the end. Yeah. That's the rules. The bitter end. The bitter end. <laughs> and it will be. <laughs> it's going to descend. How are you? I'm fine. I'm tired. I, I realised that I didn't brush my hair this morning and I was like, London can take it. Yeah. And then it's sort of vertical at the back. Sorry, we haven't, we haven't got... You know, a vodcast or whatever you <laughs> Sorry, I've never sounded so old in my life. <laughs> One of the, the vodcasts. One of those wrong. vodcasts that the young kids are into. Um, what would you normally be doing on a Sunday at this time, Josie? Um, I'm just going to lie and be like, I'd probably be doing like a 10k. <laughs> 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 just, or try, or try. Take yeah. care or try. Yeah, what's a try? Triathlon. Oh, yeah. But that's what people kind of in in the tribe is oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is your favourite bit of your triathlon oh the very start because I know it's all to come <laughs> <laughs> have you uh, have you um, you are actually an exercise though aren't you Susie ish not really I'll no. occasionally do I'm currently doing the uh, Ministry of Sound workout in my house every day what Ooh. it's on YouTube <laughs> what's that the girl then? tells me that I can do it and so, I'm like do you know what I might so what is the Ministry <laughs> of Sound workout uh, it's it's what my mum would describe as that bang bang music. Which is, <laughs> are you not having complaints? Ground floor, mate. Uh, can do what I like. So what, <laughs> what, what kind of exercises do you do? Sort of pointing in the air. Could you do a bit of pointing, a bit of jumping? Wow. Yeah. She says things like, "You're looking really good." I think you're lying. Uh, <laughs> How long is the Ministry of Sound workout? Uh, you can do one for forty minutes. It's available on YouTube. I don't know if it's illegal, actually. <laughs> Could you give us some example in the studio if I put some music on? No, because it's radio. We don't have a video log. I, what if Josh it I could be like, you're doing really well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See? Yeah, well, we, we, we don't, we're not allowed to play Ministry of Sound music on X of M, Neil. I found some drum and bass. Have you? Yeah. Go on, then. Go on, Susie. <laughs> well, am I actually doing it, or am I doing the workout? Am yeah, I saying... I don't know what this is. You can do it. Neil. Okay, guys, this is really good. Now, just stretch out <laughs> and reach. Reach, 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 Oh, I'm not getting involved in that. Do you exercise? You used to do a seven minute workout when we were on tour. I used to have an app called Seven Minute Workout. I've done it, but it gets very repetitive quickly. It really does. The first time you do it, you're like, this is my new life. By the fifth day, you're like, oh, it's that again, is it? Yeah. Oh, Another good lunges. squat. Oh, it's so boring. It's so boring. It turns out that exercise is really dull. No. Yeah. I've got a personal trainer and she's... Have you? Yeah. But you're really into swimming as well, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I love all of it, but I, I deliberately maintain this physique of a chubby inner woman just so that no one gets too intimidated. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got that. I, I, I can't deal with going to the gym. I find the men too intimidating. What? I think it's like easier them? for girls to go to the gym than men. Oh, sec- everyday sexism. Someone, someone tweeted. Match- no, <laughs> I'm joking. Because no, there's there's a real macho element. 
And do they, the, like, stare you down? Yeah. And I don't think you'd get... I think... I think that... I don't think that happens in the girls' changing rooms, but I've never experienced it, so I couldn't say. Um, what happens in the girls' changing rooms? Do you find other women intimidating at the gym? Um, n no, and that's because of my powerful sporting presence. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, um... I suppose I, just, I do a little bit. I mean, sometimes it just can be really depressing when people are so wonderful at it and you're just trying and, like, I'm coughing up bits of, like, lung or whatever and I've only run two kilometres. There, there was a man the other day who smirked when I couldn't close the locker because I didn't <laughs> have the strength. <laughs> <laughs> that's what... That's, that's the kind of... Uh, that's the last time so I go to the gym. you need to pay for a gym membership. Just buy a small locker. <laughs> oh, <laughs> do your daily workout. workout. <laughs> we won't be talking about exercise anymore. It wasn't really what we intended to talk about in the first place, but we will be talking about... Um, the you know the things we've been talking about previously. If anything, the last ten seconds has given you no light on what we're talking about. <laughs> Josh Widdicombe. Now, Josie, we are talking about. Have you ever written to a celebrity? Yeah, and I'd put a lot of money on you having written to a celebrity. <laughs> I, I wonder. And what I mean that, that means. as a compliment. What, just because I'm always Proactive. writing letters. Well, I wrote a letter when I was about ten to Tom Hanks, right? <laughs> And I invented, I said, we're doing a school project at school where we're oh, yeah, supposed to clever. write to people we admire. I wasn't. I just invented it. <laughs> so I was like, this will give this an air of credibility. Yeah. This, will, this will kind of filter it through the early stages. Yeah. You know? Never play. Nothing. My, I, I've got, I won't say who it is, um, but a guy I lived with um, who was single at the time, he cre he he was on Guardian. So you know, you can go on Guardian Soulmates, but you can you can look at people without joining oh. but you can't you can't message them so he claimed that he'd um that he was researching um oh. <laughs> um guardian soulmates for a, do a book. for a documentary <laughs> but he he got the woman he, he saw her job and then he tracked on the internet found her company <laughs> and then emailed her uh to say he was researching a documentary one of the things she liked was um Russell Howard's good news and um he sent a link to his YouTube clip of him on Russell Howard's good news oh. <laughs> I mean, and this now is less of, married this is less of writing to a celebrity and, yeah. Sort of. yeah. and um she never responded but <gasps> she must have been creeped out by that oh yeah Massively. but it is that kind of thing of pretending that it's something else yes I I, I honestly thought like I'm going to invent this big project so I'm going to write loads of his address I <laughs> at the back of something there was like a fan pages of it was kind of pre-internet it was yeah. fan pages of stars or like P.O. boxes to write to to get oh. to stars oh. I don't even know why I chose Tom Hanks and in the letter well, I was you're really a big fan told of Tom you Hanks. not really <laughs> I, like in the letter I was such a like suck up I was like yeah. you're my favourite celebrity and I admire you so much and we have to write to someone we really admire but like he wasn't my favourite. And to be honest, I don't think I really admired him. I think I just was like, we'll start off with the easy ones yeah. and then we'll move up. <laughs> get our yeah. eye in. Yeah, get, yeah. get a bit of practice on Hanks yeah, before yeah. we move on to <laughs> Bell and Sebastian. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this, what, do you want a bit of a success? It's been a lot of a like, they didn't reply. Yeah. This is from Ronnie. My hubby wrote to JJ Burnell from The Stranglers asking to meet him, uh, asking him to meet me as a birthday surprise. We met him at the YMC Barbican just before his karate class. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a heartwarming story? <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, it can happen. You could still meet Hanks. Oh, I'd be good. I, I will inquire as to the letter. Yeah, just inquire. <laughs> I, I, I think Twitter has killed it, because you can now contact them too easily. And I love to... Like, if anyone ever contacts me on Twitter, usually I'll be like, hey, how are you doing? Or like, you'll why would you say that? You'll come on too strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I am a bit full on with people who just... Like, do you ever have it where somebody comes to see you a few times and you recognise them yeah. because they've been to see you? Yeah. So you're like, hey! And they're like, oh, we, we haven't met... <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Yeah, I just, I, I love it. Your, your comedy, I don't think with a friend level. Yeah. My, uh, my cousin Sophie was once on a gap year in Australia, saw a guy in a bar and was like, I know him. I definitely, definitely know him. So I went up to him and was like, hey, you're from Portsmouth, right? I'm Sophie. Like, I'm sure we know each other. He was like, I don't think we do. And then she was like, I don't know why this guy... Anyway, the drunker she got, the more she was like, that guy's my friend and I don't know why he's being weird. It was Lee Ryan from Blue. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Well, you know. 
She, she passed Sorry, the bed. When did she realise it was Lee Ryan? When someone said to her, no, no, he's in blue. <laughs> <laughs> I wow. did that when I went on holiday to New York. I was convinced that this guy was my friend Benga, right? And I was like, oh, we're both in New York. This is really funny. Like, oh, I'll just go and say hi. And I was like, hey. And he was just like, oh, hi. And I was like, hey, it's so funny. We're both in New York. And he was like, uh-huh. And then halfway through, I realised that the guy I was talking to was just a famous actor uh, who's been in Misfits and stuff like that. And I was just like, and I actually went, "Oh no, you're a famous actor. I don't know you. You're a famous actor." And then I just kind of walked up. Josh Whittaker. Producer Neil. Good afternoon. Susie Raphael. Present. Josie Long. Hello. What a team. <laughs> Back together for one last job. Um, <laughs> so, I, mean, I don't think these four people have ever been in the room together before, so we'll move on. <laughs> There's six people in the room, but let's not reveal the identity of the other two. <laughs> exciting, eh? <laughs> it probably isn't as exciting as people think. <laughs> No, it is. Tom Hanks is here. <laughs> <laughs> Delivering the letter back to Josie at last. And Mel C. And Mel C. It's a great and they're going to do a cover of Baby When You're Gone. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you prefer to walk in now, Tom Hanks or Mel C? Mel C. Mel C. Yeah, because she'd be easier to talk to. Hanks mm. would be intimidating. Hanks, it would all be about him. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. would be. It and we also be. know that it was her birthday a couple of weeks ago, so we've got something to chat about. <laughs> Now, but we, I mean I. <laughs> this is actually quite a good setup to the point of the show we've reached, uh, where each week at this point, well, it's only been going five weeks, but I'd say it's, it's a runaway success of a feature, Neil. Correct. Yeah, you've called it... Hypothetically speaking. Basically, I've come up with a series of hypothetical scenarios. We just have to discuss how you would deal with it, put in those situations. So far, we've had... If you were fronting um, the Smiths at Glastonbury. Yeah, <laughs> how long you thought you'd get away with it before the crowd rioted. Oh. <laughs> Which Olympic sport do you think you could get away with the best? Ooh. Okay, so today, uh, Josie Long and Susie Ruffle, individually, uh, you have been booked to fill the 12-minute Super Bowl halftime show. <laughs> <laughs> would you do your stand-up? Ooh. Or would you... Well, that's the question one. Would you do stand-up, which you're going to be better at than singing? <laughs> How do you or know? Or would you think that you'd probably get away with it better by doing music? Okay. I'm at a slight disadvantage yeah. to do this gig because I've never seen anyone else do it. Right. Like, I've never... I don't know what anyone else I can else give you some done. previous people who've done it. I can tell you this year, uh, Katy Perry did it. Okay. And was she doing stand-up or did she... <laughs> <laughs> she did crowd work. Yeah. <laughs> Crowd work, a tight five and a couple of songs. <laughs> she did a lot of comparing. <laughs> <laughs> Who's come the furthest? <laughs> I'm going to start the chair in the north stand. It's going to go all the way around. Group A, <laughs> yeah. you are the home. <laughs> so she did, she did a kind of medley of her best hits. Oh, okay. Um, with a lot of dancers, cost, uh, about three or four costume changes. Yeah. And uh, also um, Missy Elliott and Lenny Kravitz made an appearance. Ooh. So, let's start. Would you go, would you, you've got a year to prepare. Would you do a song and dance or would you do, try and do your stand-up? I think if I've got a year to prepare, I wouldn't do either. <laughs> do something a bit more avant-garde. <laughs> oh. I'd do, right, this is what I do. Start out, no one on the stage. Yep. Then, allow... Oh, by the way, just to be clear, it's in the round because you're on the pitch. <laughs> okay, start out, no one on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> then a loud gong sound, yeah. like gamelan music, yeah. that echoes around the stadium. Then, over the speakers, shh, artistic. That's what I was saying. <laughs> you say artistic. Yeah. Do you think at this point the crowd, I think at this point they'd still be on board, because they think <laughs> something's, she's got to have something up her sleeve. Then they would play the opening bars to Queen's We Will Rock You, yeah. over and over again for ten minutes. <laughs> Because <laughs> everyone loves that, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, do you think... So would, you, think would you be on stage at all? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> so we've had ten, ten and a half minutes. Yeah, you've minutes got left. 90 seconds. Do you think they'd still be doing it? <laughs> then I'd come out, yeah. Listen, once it starts, you're never going to stop. And by ten minutes in, people are going to be going crazy for it. They're going to be like, we will, we... they like... When Josie. Yep. Josie. <laughs> I'm going to come we out. We will, Two we foam will. hands. Josie. People what? love yeah. those. Two foam hands and a gun that shoots t-shirts and I'm going to sing a sexy version of the United States uh, <laughs> National, National Anthem. Anthem. <laughs> and what are you going to wear? Um, ooh, stars and Stripes. Stars and Stripes, uh, sort of like a toga. <laughs> nice. Do you th well, could you top that, Susie? If, I, 
I, I would just go 12 minutes, my best best stand up. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll probably cope. What would you I've got a bit of American what, what stuff. Would, what would be, so you're going to go 12 minutes, your best stand up? Yeah. Which bit would. Would you come on? Which bit would. Yeah. Oh, come what? on. I, I'd, I'd have a hype man, because I'd be able to budget that in. Yeah, I've People being like, you haven't heard of her, but she's the best thing. Ha, ha. Like that. Everyone yeah. would be like oh, starting good. to lose their yeah. minds. That's like my equivalent of We Will Rock You. Yeah. yeah. But, and then, um, then, and then there'd be a, a video wall. <laughs> yeah, there'd be a video wall. And then I'd go on and do some stand up. There'd be a video wall I... of like you on performing. Yeah. Like clips. Yes. They'd be like, oh, here's that time that she was once on TV. Here's her talking about the funniest thing that happened in 2013. <laughs> this is going to be exciting. I can't wait to see what she's got to say. And would there be like a clip of you and maybe your back's to the camera and then you turn around and point like, yeah. here I am. Yeah. Yeah. Like a nice classic. Yeah. Guys, I'm here. And then? <laughs> and then walk on. Impression of dad. Impression of mum. Routine about nan. Nailed it. <laughs> By the way, I'm gay. Everyone's happy. <laughs> Super Bowl. Done. <laughs> yeah. And if anyone wants to book me for the Super Bowl, uh, I'm on Twitter. Listen, we'll do it together. You do all of that, then at the very end, I come on with a t-shirt gun, <laughs> singing the sexy version of the national anthem. I'd say do it. Long and ruffle. It's happening. Neil, would you just produce it? <laughs> if you had to fill the 12 minutes. Yeah, I'd just produce it. Just play Heart Shaped Box by Nirvana. <laughs> Three times. <laughs> what would you do? Me? Yeah. I'd, um, I'd, if I had a year, I'd do, I'd do shot for shot recreation of Katy Perry's <gasps> halftime show in the same outfits. <laughs> really funny. I think they'd really go with it. Like, you could pull that off. Yeah. I oh, think yeah. So. You could do like a, a parody show of the best moments of Super Bowls. Yeah. Yeah. I, I might. Because Janet Jackson got her boob out, yeah, didn't you she? You could do, do that. that. <laughs> do you think that would help? Yeah. And I think either way my function. career would be over. <laughs> Tell you what, Neil, this feature, it runs and runs. I'm really <laughs> enjoying it. Can't wait for next week. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying, I'm just imagining you getting your boob out. Josh Widdicombe. Well, we're approaching the end of the Josh Widdicombe show. Shall we wrap up some things? Let's put a bow around Let's them. put a bow around them. Number one, do you want a uh, end to the Stranglers anecdote? Yes, please. This is from uh, the guy who set up his wife... Uh, to meet the, the guy from The Stranglers. Mm -hmm. He's texted in, my wife Ronnie actually hid behind the vending machine and didn't come out when I arranged to meet JJ Burnell. <laughs> Slightly sinister end to that one. <laughs> Number two, and this is exciting. You know I tweeted at pret a -Mont earlier to see why the pasta and cheese things are only available in the airport. <laughs> you, you missed the brilliant start to the show. <laughs> <laughs> They've only replied to me. Ah, oh, what, what are they saying? So I tweeted... Quick question, why don't the cheese and pesto bagazzi use this outside airports? And they've replied, who doesn't like spending that much time on the Gatwick Express? We think they're worth it. Good question. We'll ask our Pret chefs. That was like they don't understand how to form sentences. <laughs> <laughs> like, who doesn't like to go to Gatwick? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, to, to be honest with you, it, it hasn't drawn a line under the situation. Do you think they are going to ask their Pret chefs? I should, I should tweet them again if they don't. I yeah. should just tweet, tell me when you asked your Pret chefs. <laughs> Finally, and this is the most exciting... Oh, I can't find it. This is... Neil, Phil? Uh, no, my name's Neil. Oh, Thanks very, very much. Uh, that's all I've got. <laughs> you are not being booked for the half-time Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't it's, find it's it. showbiz no... Anyway, I know it. I know it. I know what they said. Um, I went up to someone... At, oh, I know where it is. Here we go. Here my way. girlfriend saw someone at Latitude a few years ago that she said she knew... She thought she worked with her at Marks and Spencer's in Leeds when she, Leeds when she was younger. It was Josie Long. <laughs> <laughs> Did she come and up to She you? had. I worked there for ten years. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> that does happen to me a lot, actually. People does it? often think that they know me, and it, it no is a bit really awkward because you, no, no one can know me. I'm unknowable. I'm an enigma. But <laughs> like. <laughs> I, I, it's awkward because you never ever want to be the one where you're like, oh, sure, I'm a comedian, because that'll yeah. be the time where they're like, no, I went to school with you, and you're like, yep, yes, yeah, you did, yeah. yep, I'm not anybody. Um, but I had I had a woman come up to me in Edinburgh this year. No, a man come up to me. No, it was a woman, sorry. A woman came up. <laughs> she Bad said, her. my <laughs> husband. No, because it, it was a couple, but I couldn't remember which one of them came up to me. It was, it was the woman came up to me. She was said, my husband says you're someone off the telly, but I don't believe him. Oh. And I was like, well, I'm not really. I've done like the old bit. And she was like, mm, I don't think you're who he thinks he is. So, and I was, and I said to her, oh, okay, well, 
Um, th- Ch- thanks. Cheers. Nice to meet you. And she was like, it's, I'm not being rude. It's a compliment if you are. And I was like, no, you're, you're sort of being a little bit rude because yeah. we don't know each other and you've just come up to me and basically was had she a go at me. No, she was really... It was very weird. Oh, that, yeah, I don't know oh. that. And it's I was a, like, I wonder who she thinks I am. It's a bleak end to this topic, though, isn't it? <laughs> so instead we'll go with mine's in reverse. 25 years ago, Andrew Ridgely accosted me thinking I was Prince. That's an astonishing oh, tweet. What a great tweet. Yeah, I think that draws a line under it, Neil, doesn't yeah. it? Very much so. 